In this drawing, we'll talk about switching in the UCS environment, focusing on pinning in the IOMs and Fabric Interconnects. In part two, we'll discuss Ethernet host virtualizer mode. Let's draw the environment starting with the Fabric Interconnects, which we'll label 6100A and 6100B. The UCS environment is split into an A and B site. The 6100s are connected via two links that carry management traffic only. We want to avoid the spanning tree. These links carry no data. We'll connect the fabric interconnects to two separate upstream switches, which could be five or seven thousands, or some other switch for that matter. We'll connect the fabric interconnects to these switches. These links are called uplinks. We'll connect the upstream switches together using a port channel. We'll talk more about upstream connectivity a little later. The B-Series blades are housed in the 5108 chassis. The chassis has room for two 2104 IOM modules, input-output modules. Each IOM has four 10 gig ports. We'll connect the A-side IOM module to 6100A and the B-side IOM module to 6100B. We would never connect an IOM module to both 6100s. These links are called server links. You can configure one, two, or four links for each IOM, but not three. We need the same number of links on each IOM. Server links can be connected to the fixed ports on the 6120 or 6140, but not the ports on the expansion modules. The 5108 chassis has slots for eight half-width blades or four full-width blades or some combination of the two. The half-width blades have room for one mezzanine adapter, providing a 10 gig attachment to each of the A and B sides. The full-width blades can have two mezzanine cards and so two 10 gig attachments to the A and B sides. Switching works the same whether you have one, two, or 20 chassis connected to the 6100s. Let's look at what happens in the IOMs first. Let's draw our 6100s in our two IOMs and add eight half-width blades. Each blade has a 10 gig connection to each IOM via the midplane. There's no switching in the IOMs, it's effects. The blades are pinned to specific server links. If we have one server link on each IOM, then all of the blades are pinned to that link. If we have two server links, then blades 1, 3, 5, and 7 are pinned to link 1, and blades 2, 4, 6, and 8 are pinned to link 2. Three links is not a valid configuration. If we have four links, then blades 1 and 5 are pinned to link 1, blades 2 and 6 are pinned to link 2, blades 3 and 7 to link 3, and blades 4 and 8 are pinned to link 4. If we have four server links, we have a total of 80 gig bandwidth in an active-active forwarding. With eight half-width blades, the blades themselves would have a total of 160 gig bandwidth, so we have two to one over subscription. Question, in a four server link configuration, what would happen if the third server link on the A side fails? The answer is that blades three and seven would see their A side VNIX fail. Either fabric failover, which we'll discuss in a little while, or nick teaming would have to be used to reroute the traffic to the B side. Blades will not be automatically repinned to other server links if one server link fails. You need to react the chassis for repinning to take effect, and that will interrupt traffic on both sides. If you add server links, you will also need to react the chassis. Remember, there's no switching in the IOMs. It's effects. Question two, what will happen if we react the chassis with the server link failed? The answer, traffic on both sides will be repinned based on the two server link scenario. Ports three and four will carry no traffic on either side. One more question. Say we have a two server link scenario, but we populate the chassis top down and left to right. In this example, we have the left half of the chassis populated. Imagine that the first server link fails. What happens? 
No traffic is carried on the A side. Fabric failover or nick teaming would be required to direct all traffic to the B side. Keep things simple. Always populate the chassis slots in order and always connect the server links in order. There are significant improvements with UCS 2.0. We'll deploy two 6248 fabric interconnects and two 2208 IOMs. This lets us deploy eight 10 gig server links on each side for a total of 160 gig active active. These links can be port channeled in two, four, or eight link configurations. Using the new 1280 mezzanine card, we can connect our half width blade to each side with four 10 gig connections to the mid plane. These connections are automatically port channeled. That gives 40 gig on each side, although individual flows are limited to 10 gig. With eight half width blades, we have a total of 640 gig active active and a four to one over subscription. And our final question for this section, what happens if one of the server links fail? The answer is traffic flows over the remaining links. And host mode, also called Ethernet Host Virtualizer or EHV mode, is recommended. In EHV mode, we do not run the spanning tree protocol. The UCS system looks like a very large ESXi server and all links can be active. We won't discuss switching mode because we won't use that mode for UC on UCS. We'll focus on the A side and connect 6100A to two upstream switches. We'll draw three servers and configure a single service profile VNIC on each of them. The server VNICs are pinned via the IOMs to VEthernet interfaces on the 6100. The VEthernet interfaces are pinned to uplinks. The default behavior is dynamic pinning and is fine for UC on UCS. Dynamic pinning is round robin. Load balancing occurs every 300 seconds. If you add a new link, then service profile VNICs will be repinned to the new uplink at that time. If an uplink fails, the VEthernet interface will be repinned to another uplink. The failover is software driven and takes less than one second. The service profile VNIC will stay up. If you look at network convergence in the upstream switches, you see that the MAC address for server 3A is located on the wrong switch ports. Question, what can we do to speed upstream network convergence? The answer is we can send gratuitous ARPs or GARPs the fabric interconnects do this. It's also possible to configure static pinning. With static pinning, we connect specific service profile VNICs to specific uplinks. We can do this for traffic management, for example. We can take an Oracle server and connect it to a specific uplink. That uplink will be dedicated to the Oracle server unless all of the other uplinks fail. In that case, the Oracle uplink would be used by the other servers as well. If the static pin uplink fails, then the VEthernet interface is not repinned. The service profile VNIC will go down and we would need fabric failover or NIC teaming to redirect the traffic. Let's go back to our drawing for dynamic pinning. This time, let's imagine we have two links to each upstream switch and these are port channeled. In this case, the VEthernet interfaces will be round-robin load balanced across the port channels. If an uplink fails, the flows will move to another uplink in the channel. The recovery will be hardware-based and take less than one second. The service profile VNIC will stay up. No GARPs need to be sent. Port channels are recommended for connecting to upstream switches. With port channels to the upstream switches, what happens if we have an upstream switch failure? The VEthernet interface will be repinned to another port channel or uplink. The failover is software driven and takes less than one second. The service profile VNIC will stay up. Lots of GARPs may be sent to speed upstream convergence. Question. What technology can we deploy to improve this? 
We can use VPCs to connect the 6100 to both upstream switches. VPCs are recommended. Please have a look at UCS Switching Part 2, EHV Mode, V-Switches, and Upstream Connectivity to see the rest of the story.